So our homeless deserve compassion. And I understand people who don't like what I'm doing may think that that's a rich thing for me to say. I believe that if we reinstate the camping ban, what will happen is that it will force the city to actually produce real solutions. One thing I think we can all agree on is the city has totally failed to produce any real solutions over the last two years. And the thing that should anger you and every other taxpayer is that they've spent $161 million the last three fiscal years. We have almost nothing to show for it. This year, they're spending $73 million plus $225 from the federal government. Right? That's over $300 million. And their approach is going to be motels and hotels and all these other things, rather than the two things that we know work. Number one is a centralized, regulated campground, like Haven for Hope, where you have services on site job training, mental health treatment, drug and alcohol abuse treatment, you have caseworkers on site, you have showers, you have electricity, you have toilets, it's all right there. It's self-enclosed, you have police there. That's number one, that's something we need immediately. Second is we need the Allen Graham Community First Model, we need the Camp Esperanza Model, I went there today and toured it. They're building micro homes there as well, both transitional and, and more long term. They're building something like 225 of them over the next few months. So that is, those are the models that are going to work. What doesn't work is the, the model we saw in Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle, Portland, and Honolulu, which is basically open camping, whatever you want, wherever you want, whenever you want. You increase the size of the homeless population. You don't get them any help. You, you feed all of their uh, worst addictions, and their lives become worse in the process. And you also make the homeless unsafe from other homeless. Exactly. Um, you know what I mean? Because if you're living in a tent, right, and that brought up with Ann Howard, right? Like, there are homeless people that are scared to leave their tent because they're scared of another homeless person um, taking stuff from their tent. And you got a lot of people who are homeless that, I mean, a lot haven't, right? But there's a sizable number, right? Considering the population keeps increasing, there's a, a large chunk of homeless people that have been through the system, that have gone to jail, that have spent years in that system, right? Not everybody. I'm not even going to say most people, but there's enough of them out there, right? And, that, like, if you're in jail, right, like, you, there's a petty mindset that comes with that, you know, and there's a predatory behavior that comes with that. And if, you know, you see somebody that's like a weaker inmate, you'll prey on them, right? And if you see a weaker homeless person, you're going to pray. What's going to stop you from preying on them too? And a lot of these people, the people that you see ranting and raving and hollering and begging for money that look the saddest and the most desperate, do you like, you have to be like almost naive to think that they're not getting bullied or taken advantage of by other, by other homeless people or the people that are just selling drugs in the tents or whatever, the situation may be like you have to be completely um blind to not even consider that a possibility and like the more you enable that the more you're like you actually could be hurting vulnerable homeless people like and i don't think that's not even been talked about right so no and that's that goes back to the to, i agree with you i agree with all that i mean th that goes back to this question of are the homeless better off today than they were two years ago uh, and i don't think they are i really don't think they are